Okay, so it is inevitable. Everybody wants to know, hey, how do you increase book sales? Just so happens I've got a guest expert on today that has helped the cream of the crop, the best of the best, and some really, it's just a veritable who's who of authors in the world today. So you're gonna wanna make sure you stay tuned to today's interview. What's happening? It's Dale here, and I'm just tickled to death. You took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me to talk about my favorite thing in self-publishing books. And of course, we're going to be talking about how to drastically increase book sales with some insider info uh, with a popular service called Scribando. And you're probably saying, what's the deal here? What are you trying to sell me on? Well, before I try selling you on anything, I think it's important that we lay a little bit of groundwork. But before we do that, today's broadcast is sponsored by the fine folks of Author Brand Kits. Listen, folks, I've been talking about Author Brand Kits for the past few weeks now, and it's for good reason. If you're looking for a done-for-you service that handles website setup, custom email, email marketing, as well as social media and beyond, you need to take a look at Author Brand Kits. Head on over to our sponsor link at dailinks.com slash ABK to get 25% off for a limited time. Again, that's dailinks.com slash ABK. Today's guest is Albert Griesmeyer. Uh, he has an MBA and is a founder and the CEO of Scribando, which we're gonna talk a little bit about today, a book marketing consultant for more than 100 publishers and authors. That's a lot of people. He's worked on projects resulting in more than 2 million copies sold worldwide combined. He's worked with best-selling and award-winning authors such as B.C. Schiller, Harvey Mackay, Patrick McEwen, and Garrett Kramer, and consulted for clients for more than 15 different countries. Wow. He is also the creator of the book publishing initiatives, Lean Book Publishing, and Who Wrote It? His insights on book marketing have been consumed by more than 100,000 authors. That is a lot of authors, folks. So it really tickles me to share with you. And welcome to the show, Albert. How you doing, buddy? Hi, Dale. Thanks so much for the introduction. Happy to be on the show. Thanks for having me. I, I'm super pumped. And as soon as you got me coached up on how to say your last name properly, I still butchered it up. Griesmeyer. Am I right? Right. There we yes. go. Yes. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, all right. So we're going to let the live chat and live viewers know if you got questions here about increasing book sales and pretty much just about anything, because this guy consults for a lot of different authors, you'll want to load it up inside the chat right now. And if you're watching this on the replay, the same goes for you. Make sure you load us up inside the comments. So let's get into the questions. If you're happy to indulge me here. Let's start it out with, just briefly share with us how you got into the publishing business in the first place. Right, Dale. So, you know, I got into the publishing business probably like, you know, most consultants do. I actually wrote a book myself. So that's how I started. I actually have it here for you. You can look at it. It's a German book. Yeah? It's called Caro's Wunsch. And it's a philosophical youth novel. And um, I wrote it more than 10 years ago. And I was, you know, one of the early self-publishers in Germany. And that's, you know, how I got um, into the market. Nice. All right. So I, I, I couldn't help, but I, I, I was spying on you. I looked at your other publications. You got <laughs> one right now that is one of the top 100 free eBooks right now based on self-publishing, or maybe it was writing. Do you care to share a little bit about that? Yeah, that's a um, book sales explosion. Um, it actually, you know, got a huge upgrade right now. So I'm pretty excited about it. And it has the latest tactics that I used over the last year, you know, with my authors, with my publishers. So there is um, really, really good stuff in there. Um, lots of tactics that are not really featured anywhere else. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. And it's true. It should be today. I'm um, still, you know, on the free promo. Yeah, so you know, everyone who is watching right now um, should be able to get it for free. But afterwards, it's also, you know, not expensive and I can definitely recommend it. Nice. So uh, is that, I'm assuming it's available in Kindle Unlimited then? Um, yes. Nice. Yes. I'll be reading it for sure. Yes, yes, for sure. That's, that's awesome. So uh, when I saw that today, I was like, you know what, I got to bring that up because it's not an easy feat to get the top of 
the, the free best sellers list because you're going to have to have like dozens upon dozens upon dozens of downloads in a given day in order to get that. So big kudos to you, man. That's awesome. I'm glad to see you slaying it. What led you, you to consulting a veritable who's who list of authors and entrepreneurs? Yeah, so, um, you know, as I said, you know, I wrote my book. I was one of the early self-publishers. And, you know, then I've seen, well, you know, it, it's um, even for a digital marketer, you know, someone who is very familiar with the Internet, it's it's difficult yeah, to market a book online. And so, you know, I tried myself to find, um, you know, all the best ways and got better and better over the years. And then I decided with a friend of mine, um, that, you know, we want to launch together a service and a consulting company that would help authors, you know, being more happy with the book projects, um, having a better, um, having just making more sales, of course. And that's how I got um, yeah, into the market. And I started to consult authors. And from there, you know, it just went on. With some of these big name authors that I noticed on your list, because I dug in a few of them and uh, man, some of them are super wealthy. Some of them uh, have a prolific backlog of books. Like, did you approach them or did they find you? And, and how, how did that go about? Yeah, I'd say it's a mix. Um, you know, some of the authors found me. Yeah, you know, they, they found Scribendo or my personal web page and contacted me. And I also have, you know, quite good Upwork profile. So a couple of clients um, came through Upwork as well. And, um, and maybe also LinkedIn, because I also have a good um, LinkedIn profile and um, I'm managing a, a big LinkedIn group for book publishing professionals. Oh. So it's a combination, I'd say. Is this a group that's available to the public to join at all? Yes. Yes, it is. Nice. Um, Albert, and... what are we doing, man? I haven't connected with you at all on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, LinkedIn is a fantastic resource. Maybe I ought to bring you back on here that we can individually specifically talk about LinkedIn because obviously it's it's a, it's a an amazing opportunity. Right. Uh, definitely. And also the group um, is... Um, um, is very, very useful. And I'm actually sharing once a month um, the monthly book word update that we do with Scribendo, where we are informing authors about the latest things going on in the industry in this group as well. So, yeah, just, you know, you can connect with me, um, you know, on Scribendo, on LinkedIn, and, um, and we take it from there. Nice. Uh, what's the name of the group, if you don't mind me asking? So the name of the group is Book Publishing Professionals. Excellent. I uh, look forward to seeing a request from me here before the end of the day. That's so awesome. And I'll see about grabbing that link and share it inside the description after this interview today. Uh, man, I'm finding out some really cool stuff. This is awesome. All right. So let's get into the meat of today's broadcast. And that's going to be, of course, increasing book sales. I want to start it out. First of all, is let's discuss some of the most egregious errors that authors make. So what are the three biggest mistakes that hold back book sales for authors? So um, from my experience, the number one mistake is that your book offer is not strong enough. And with book offer, you know, I'm talking about the book, of course. Um, so, you know, the, the whole manuscript, the storyline, and also the marketing package. Yeah? But, you know, if, if this is not working out, then it just makes life much harder later um, with marketing the book. Yeah? So that's that's the, the number one um, mistake, not focusing enough on really having a fantastic product. And um, the second mistake is that sometimes, you know, authors, publishers are not able to generate enough uh, visibility for a title. So it might be actually that this title, you know, uh, would work well commercially. However, you know, the book launch didn't really work out well. And then, you know, you, you say, well, you know, maybe it was not the best title and, you know, authors move on there. Yeah? Um, so it's, it's very important to do a proper book launch to make sure that actually enough people got in touch with the book so that the market can, you know, decide on its own if, if you know, this book is really um, fantastic. Yeah. And, and third mistake is 
not being able to drive enough traffic to the book. Mm. Um, there is still, from my experience, a little bit a misconception out there that, you know, as soon as the book is online, that it's available, some people will see it. And, you know, as we all know, Amazon got very crowded. There was a lot of competition out there. And in some cases, it might just be that, you know, just barely, you know, people are getting in touch with the book. And, um, and so that's why this can lead to a wrong conclusion, I would say, because authors might believe, well, you know, people don't like the book, they don't buy it, but maybe there was just not enough traffic to the book. Mm, very good. So you're essentially saying that the biggest mistake a lot of people make is they just publish and just hope to get sales. Um, yeah, so not necessarily, yeah, because I know, you know, we all try, you know, to do a good uh, book launch to promote the book, mm -hmm. but it just, as you know, Dale, um, it's difficult nowadays, yeah, because, yes. you know, it, it's, it's a competitive space and, and sometimes, you know, this can lead to wrong conclusions if, you know, the book launch does not work out too well, um, because actually, you know, the book um, might do very well yeah, in case it would have more initial sales, there would be more traction, and then it could be, you know, very successful book. Gotcha. Very good. All right. So now we've talked about the one extreme. Let's go over to the next extreme. What are the three best things successful authors do to move the needle in their business? So some of the people you've worked with. What are the three big things that you see that they have in relation to each other that really helps build their business? Right. So as the most important point, I want to come back to having a fantastic book because it's just super important. Yeah. And so what you can do, even if your book is already out um, in the market, is to update it frequently. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's quite obvious. If it's a non-fiction book, you know, where everyone knows, you know, it should have the, the latest insights. Um, however, also in fiction, it's important um, to make sure that, you know, the book cover is really amazing, yeah? that there are no errors in the book, that the layout is nice, that the book description, um, you know, is really sparkling. And um, so this is very, very important. Yeah? Always focus on, on, you know, having a fantastic book out there. And um, from my experience, another aspect um, that's very important and that successful authors do very well is that they have established a way of getting consistent book sales. And this, it might be because they have an existing author platform, yeah, for instance, a YouTube channel, a web page, a LinkedIn profile, but there is some way where, you know, they get constant attention and this um, drives sales. And because of that, they are able to, you know, keep momentum up and actually sell books. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, so... Let's guide it over towards another direction here. A lot of people are going, well, that's all well and good, Albert, for those successful authors, because. So let's go ahead and let's let's put that off, that argument off to the side. Let's put it to bed because what I want to know is what can authors, all authors from newbies to the experienced people do right now to generate more book sales? So... Apart from really making sure that you are very proud of your book because it's fantastic, um, it's fundamentally important to driving traffic to the book. Okay. So in case you are not having lots of sales right now, make sure that you run some promotions uh, with some third-party services. So you can uh, you know, re reduce your ebook price, for instance, and then... Um, use services like Barking Booksy, for instance, or Robin Reads, you know, to just get some traffic to the book to get sales coming. So that's very important. Okay. And um, the other aspect is um, also looking at 
search engine optimization and conversion rates. So, you know, what do I mean with that is, you know, making sure that there is a chance for having visibility with the book, you know, on a retailer site, because, you know, the right keywords are targeted with the seven backend keywords that you have from KDP, for instance, yeah. or, you know, that the book description um, also mentions those keywords. And of course, that the whole package is done in a way that facilitates having um, strong conversion rates. Nice, nice. Good tips. I've got something I want to kind of build off of this. For something like running any kind of promotions, so you mentioned, I think, Bargain Booksy, Booksy was one. Um, you mentioned another one. I'm sorry, it slips my mind now. Uh, we get the idea. Buck Books, it could probably be, it could be Readsy, it could be any number of those services. How frequent should I be using services like that? Am I using this like every day, every week, once a month? Um, I'd say it really depends on the number of sales that you're generating. Okay. Um, I like to use those services a lot when you need, you know, some initial sales yeah, or some sales push. Yeah, then it's just very good way um, of getting more book sales. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I it's difficult, you know, to really come up with a frequency. Um, what's of course very important is to look at the return. Yeah? So in case you spend, you know, thirty US dollars on a campaign, then you of course would like to, you know, come close to this expense break even or even be profitable. And in case it works out, then I don't see a limit yeah, um, for doing promotions, of course, because it helps you with the organic visibility. Um, so that's definitely you know good step then. Do you all right, for some reason my question was too intense, so we're just gonna keep rolling right <laughs> along here. Um, okay, you talk about getting numerous like frequency and such. What I'm kind of wondering is, should I stack a bunch of the different services all at once, or should I try one at a time to see which one works best for me? So I certainly recommend not to do them all at once so that you are actually able to see the return yeah, of different promotional channels um, unless you are really trying to you know get on bestseller lists you know, you know sh really shoot up the ranking then of course it's always a good idea to bundle some promotional tactics um, and you know for doing that within you know 48 hours for instance because this has the biggest effect then. Mm. However, on the other hand, it's difficult to assess the effectiveness of the tactics then. Interesting. So we don't want to be piling all one atop the other without first knowing how effective it is and more or less building it out to where we're going, okay, maybe I do a promotion with this service on this day and then another few days later, I do another promotion. Is that where I'm going? Am I going the right direction? Yes, yes, that's what I recommend. Okay. Um, unless you already know what kind of promotional services are working well for your book. Yeah. Um, once you know that, you can certainly just you know pull them together for you know a bestseller campaign or a ranking campaign to really you know shoot up in the rankings. Gotcha. Excellent tips. All right, so I'm going to ask you the question that I know inevitably people are screaming at me right now. <laughs> Dale, ask it, ask it. What if you have no money? What's the best way for me to drive traffic towards my book so I can increase book sales? Yeah, that's a, um, that's a, a tricky question, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So if if you have you know absolutely zero budget, um, then I'd say the best is always to really focus on the network that you have. Uh, and and take it from there. Uh, so, you know, start small um, and, you know, make sure that kind of the foundation is built and then take it from there. And especially what I've noticed with, if you do not have uh, lots of budget, also not a lot of marketing experience, it always comes down to the book in the end uh, because you know, if, you know, we are big publishing houses, yeah, you know, we've got the bugs, 
then you know it's possible yeah to you know overcome um, difficulties yeah and you know do big campaigns but in case we do not have the budget um, we really need to rely on a very very um, on a fantastic book and that makes life much easier then so often it's a better investment saying well you know I, I want to improve my cover you know let's do a fresh book cover um, maybe let's fix you know some things with the layout um, and this is a better investment than instead of you know investing into an advertising campaign gotcha i like this this is awesome i'm glad we're addressing some of these things all right i'm going to give you a loaded question here what have you found is the most effective marketing and promotion tool so most effective one um in case it's working out for you and i'm coming up to this in a second you got a disclaimer um, there it's like it, what, <laughs> what works for you may not work for everybody else is what you're essentially saying <laughs> um right uh, um is you know running ams ads uh, mm. and i'm telling you why it's effective because especially if you are able to be successful with an automated campaign mm -hmm. then it does not require, you know, lots of expertise, um, you know, lots of effort. You know, you sign up with AMS, you start the auto campaign, you check that um, the A course is working, mm -hmm. and then it's very effective. However, we all know that um, that it won't be profitable or break even for everyone. Yeah, so that's why you need to you need to test it, yeah, to see if it works for you. Um, but I'm telling you, I have some clients um, who are very successful um, running AMS ads and some with automated campaigns. Yeah, so they did not even have to you know, start manual campaigns with keyword research and categories. So, you know, just the auto campaign and it's working and they are happy. Awesome. Good stuff. And, and so everybody kind of knows AMS. Uh is Amazon advertising now. So some newbies might not know that used to be called Amazon marketing services, but then they ditched that. But for some reason or another, they still have AMS listed on a few of their areas of their website. So, um, all right, I've got one other question as we start to transition things over. Remember folks, load us up with some comments. And if you're enjoying some of this, this content, please hit that thumbs up. And uh, Albert, do me a favor, put, point down, point downward for me. Go visit scribando.com. Scribando. Scribando. Is it what's the proper pronunciation? Am I messing that up? Scribando seems like, you know, like seems right, but is it scribando? Yeah, scribando is fine. Okay, good stuff. All right. So I'm gonna ask you this. How vital is it for authors to stay up to date on relevant news or topics in the world of self-publishing? It's um it's super important. Uh, and actually one of the overlooked aspects um, from my experience and I want to share you know some examples to illustrate this point so we all know that it's very important to be early to the party and to learn early about you know new features new trends etc so for instance let's go back a couple of years when Amazon started KDP yeah, and starting started the promotional services you know, the first authors who published with KDP, you know, who really um, made it as a business, um, it was definitely much easier than it is today. And so what they had at this time was they had, you can call it, you know, educational knowledge. They knew something that's happening in the market that others um, did not know. And so, um, and that's why it is important yeah, to to know about these things, to you know know earlier about trends, about new products, about features, and that's actually what I'm doing with Scribendo, yeah, and what's very important for me because I just know how important it is to you know have a have a, a successful book project and to make it sales. Nice, great example. That's so awesome, and I think this is one of the reasons why I get so obsessed about this business. And speaking of obsessed. Uh, it was probably a little over a year ago. I stumbled on Jane Friedman's The Hot Sheet. And as I kind of shared with you before, I was, I, I'm was i a big fanboy of Jane. She's got some fantastic work. Her website's awesome. And when I saw she had The Hot Sheet, I'm like, this is great. 
my biggest issue with Jane, and sorry, Jane, this is this is no knock on you, is that she curates so much information in such a large email newsletter that it becomes almost un- indigestible. That I'm like, it becomes overwhelming. And I like having the information, but I want to have it in bite-sized chunks. So that way I'm not choking on the information and not sure what to discern, what I can use and what I can't. Then along, Scribando comes. And I'm getting these weekly email newsletters that are just, mm, chef's kiss, amazing curates the information, puts it into links to where I can actually go out and pick what I want and choose what I want without having this gigantic email newsletter. And every now and then, Scribando will actually send out even like just some dedicated ones. I know, I think you guys just sent out one, I think today. I'm forgetting what it was about. But either way, um, I'm gushing over what you have to offer. And I don't often gush over this. I'm going to let everybody know that this is that Albert's not paying me to say this. Yes, he gives me complimentary access because, you know, don't expect to get complimentary access from, from Albert at this point. I do have to disclose that. But I want to ask right now, so it's super clear to everybody, what is Scribando? Thanks, Dale. Yeah. So Scribando is a service that keeps you up to date with the latest industry news, but most importantly, with the latest book marketing developments. So it's very focused on the book marketing aspects. And so, you know, if you are an author and are using this service, also a publisher, then you won't miss, yeah, for instance, when Amazon, you know, launches AMS ads in a new country, yeah, when there is a new feature out there that you can use, when there is, you know, a new service that might have a quite time sensitive opportunity where the time window is not gigantic. So this is what the focus, the main focus of Scribendo is. So what we're actually doing is we are doing one monthly book world update that really brings a summary of the main industry news, the main trends, the main opportunities right now in the market for selling more books. And in addition, we are sending out Scribendo alerts, and they are really focused on specific opportunities right now in the market. So, you know, as I already said, you know, a couple of months ago, you know, AMS ads, you know, got available in new geographies. And of course, you know, our subscribers, you know, got an alert. And so this is um, what, um, what Scribando is doing. Yeah, I love what Scribando does. It's fantastic. Honestly, um, so, so worth it. Uh, how much does Scribando cost? Uh, is there like a monthly breakdown or a yearly breakdown? So it costs $8 per month and that's it. That's it. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you guys that they're, they're, it's great, great information. The uh, email newsletter is fantastic. And there has been numerous times where... You guys have shared some stuff with me that I'm like mind blowing. I was like, nice. I'm like, I did not see this. And so, yeah, staying on the cusp of those type of things, well worth the $8 per month, folks. Go over to scribando.com, get yourself something set up. It's a month to month basis. So for some reason you don't want to use it anymore, you can always just cancel and come back later. But I think you're going to find that you're going to probably get hooked just like I did. Um, I'm going to ask you one more question. We're going to go on over into uh, the live Q&A. What has been the most exciting news to you over the last year? I'm just asking you personally. Um, So for me personally, the most exciting news um, has been our development as well, that the retailers, you know, outside of Amazon are really starting, you know, to cater self-published authors and to offer promotional services. And, you know, still, you know, a lot of this is in the making and, you know, maybe not so many, um, you know, publishers and authors know about it, but it's certainly coming and I'm looking forward, you know, to see more over the next years of what those other retailers are doing and the opportunities that we will see in the market. Nice. It's, I want to lean on this a little bit because I had a guest yesterday, uh, Hannah Jacobson from Book Award Pro. Got to introduce the two of you, by the way, if I haven't already. Um, She brought up something very interesting. You're going to love the news on this one. Pulitzer Prizes used to be kind of 
reserved for the elite, the celebrities, the traditional published authors, they're now opening up the gateway to self-published authors as well. And so that's that's a big thing right there. So it's really neat to see. So if you folks are watching this, um, pat yourself on the back. You are a pioneer right now and you are really leading this business into something new and something great when we can be able to get things like a Pulitzer Prize nomination and not have to be trad pub anymore. So just wanted to add that there to it. Hey, uh, before we get to the Q&A, how can viewers get a hold of you, Albert? Um, you mean how, how they can sign up for Scribando? How they can get a hold of you or get a hold of Scribando, either way, man. Okay. Yeah, so the best is to go to scribando.com. I'm not sure if it's still visible. And, you know, just go to the contact page, you know, send me an email. That's the best way. And, of course, you can also directly, um, you know, subscribe at Scribando. You know, start your free trial, actually. It's a free trial. So it's completely risk-free and just using the service. Nice. Excellent. Let's go over to the live Q&A and uh, we're, hopefully you loaded us up here, folks. We had a brief glitch. For some reason, OBS, my uh, live encoder, was just like, I'm done. I was like, okay. And me, I'm like, cool hand Luke. Like, Albert doesn't know a single thing. I'm just like, hey, hang on a second. We're off air. <laughs> I had to get us back on. All right. All right, I want to say what's up to Thomas A. Bradley. Great to see you here, Thomas. Book Dragon, Kevin McGuire, Derek Newton. Streaks, thank you so much, Streaks, for coming in early. I was watching your Fiverr gig videos. Awesome, thank you so much. Appreciate the support. Um, let's see here, Wayne Blinko over in the UK. We have over 40 people watching us right now, Albert. So this is pretty good for an nice. early morning. So um, let's see here, what's a good title structure? Hmm. Good title structure? Um, no... So it does, there is not one structure that works for all genres. Yeah? So it's definitely different, you know, if it's fiction or nonfiction. There are some elements that are important to, you know, include yeah? or, or at least, you know, to take into account. And one is certainly that your main keyword ideally is included um, if it's not in the title already, that it's in the subtitle. And what are like to look at as well is that there is a clear benefit within the title and another aspect is that there is some sort of curiosity as well so it should not be boring yeah we know we we all you know like this um this title that you know lead us then to the book description as a next step gotcha excellent love it uh, Mason Pines, kind of a statement, kind of a question here. Mason, thank you so much for the support. He said, uh, I know that I need to draw in reviewers, get on blogs, podcasts, booktubers, but I haven't been able to figure out how. So what do you recommend, Albert? Yeah, you know, getting book reviews is certainly one of the most challenging, um, you know, aspects for authors, especially in case you do not have, you know, big network yourself. Um, what works very well from my experience is if you are really in for the long term, which means you should not immediately ask, you know, someone for a review, but it's it's much better to you know, develop the connection slowly yeah, to really, you know, ask first for feedback, yeah? be, be really genu genuinely interested in that feedback. And then you can, in, at a later stage, you know, maybe ask for a review. So this is something that I always recommend. And then there are a couple of services out there um, for getting um, book reviews as well that I worked, um, that I had good experiences in the past. Um, should I share some of those, Dale? Please do. Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm taking notes at this point. <laughs> so, for instance, you know, I like to use Book Sirens. Yeah, it's you won't get you know lots of reviews, but you know you can get a couple. Yeah, and that's also very important. Um, also, using Pubby, yeah, um, has worked um, very well. And yeah, so there are certainly ways for getting reviews. A puppy is a very interesting one. Uh, share with the audience a bit about your experience with puppy so far. 
Yeah, so um, what Pabi does is they are, you know, like like a network where there are authors using Pabi and you can earn points, um, you know, by reviewing books of others and then you can post your book and someone who is interested in giving a review for your book um, can do so. And it's a quite reliable way, actually, um, of getting reviews for your book. Awesome. Good stuff. I, I, I kind of dabbled with it ever so briefly, but then I realized there was some time commitment involved with it. And uh, I was like, I had to kind of back out on it. So it's not one of those ones you can just set and forget. You have to actually be active on. Am I correct in saying that? Yes, definitely. Okay, awesome. So glad yes. that uh, you, you asked that. Um, Thomas Bradley wanted to know where he can get your books. I went ahead and I dropped a link inside the chat. You can go ahead and hit that. That is an Amazon Associates link. So if for some reason you pick up a purchase, it helps support this channel while helping out my buddy Albert over here too. All right, Elizabeth Morris asks this. What is the best marketing strategy for fantasy authors? For fantasy authors, um, I certainly recommend using at Kindle Unlimited yeah, as a way to you know, reach readers that are already on Kindle Unlimited. And the other tactic that I recommend is doing promotions. So what I, what I mean with promotions, using third party services that are focused on running discounted ebook uh, price promotions. And you always need to check with the recommended services. For instance, Ritzy, they have you know, a quite good overview about recommended promotional services. And then you need to check if the specific service um, has a dedicated subscriber base for fantasy, for instance, and then you, you book. Nice. All right, so next question, Joyce Isaacson. Very basic question here for you. What are your thoughts about Facebook ads? Difficult, <laughs> um, challenging. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a real digital marketer. Yeah? So I come from this angle and I did Facebook ads already five years ago. Yeah. And I know how complex they are. And that's why I would not recommend doing Facebook ads if you have not a lot of experience with that, yeah? because there are just many things that you know can go wrong and you need a certain level of expertise to make them work. If you are able to get help, yeah, you know, from an experienced freelancer, you know, from an agency, then you can do it. However, it's it's challenging. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I know my wife has had some some success with the Facebook ads and such, and I keep kind of trying to talk her into to showing me some of her tricks and such, but we've just yet to get the time. I've got a two for a question here. Actually, these these kind of stack one atop the other. Streaks in W A Blanco asks kind of the same question that kind of ties together. Streaks first asks, do we need to build an email list? And then Wayne says, what is a good strategy to grow your email list? Yeah, email lists. Um, I actually have a little bit of contradictory um, you know, stance on that because most consultants recommend building an email list, having an email list. Mm -hmm. And I just know from experience that it's very hard building an email list, especially if you're new to the market. That's why it's not you know, my main uh, recommendation. Okay. And in case, you know, when we talk about what is the best way for growing an email list, then I would say cross promotions. And what I mean by that is you look for people, you know, in your audience, in your network who already have, you know, good subscriber base. And then you try to get recommended by them. That's the fastest way for growing an email list, especially if you're starting out. Nice, good stuff. Uh, Walid Higgins asks, can a dedicated website really help to promote the book? Actually, my opinion is quite similar to the email list. It's always difficult if you start from zero nowadays. 
So, you know, if you start out, you know, have the web page initially, you do not get any visits. So um, that's why it's also not my main recommendation because it takes some time to build the audience. Gotcha, gotcha. More questions. These guys are just chomping <laughs> at the bit today. This is fantastic. I love seeing everybody. If you're enjoying today's content, please hit the thumbs up and go visit scrabando.com right away. I've already seen that somebody went ahead and picked it up. Uh, Ray, Ray RY says he was checking it out. Elizabeth said she just signed up for the membership, so fantastic. Let us know if you go pick up a membership to Scribando inside the comments, and that would be awesome. SL Michaels asks a question. I think I can probably answer this, but I'm gonna let you answer it anyways. Would Scribando be good for fiction authors? Or is it just for nonfiction? It's certainly relevant for both. Yep. Simple answer, right? Uh, yeah, because there's been some things that covers across the board. Um, it's, a, it's a full curation, folks. So when you're looking at some of what they send out in their email newsletters, they curate all the content. And every now and then they send out specific emails about one item or another. And it's really up to date. Like something rolls out it's in your inbox. So they're, they're on top of things. So love the team over there. You guys do a great job. Uh, let's see here. I'm scrolling down through the comments. All right, Joyce Isaacson came back because she was asking about the titling and such. So my book is called Wish You Were Here, A Rock Fantasy. Is this a good title for a book? Sounds good to me. Um... I do not see the book cover right now. So, you know, I can't give a definite answer on that because it's also important that, you know, it matches the cover and that it matches the description. However, you know, my spontaneous reaction would be that it's it's a good title. Gotcha. There we go. Look at that. Getting, getting some direct answers on some of these things here. All right. Ray Wise <laughs> asks this. When publishing your first book, should you concentrate more on sales or just trying to get your name out there? I'd certainly recommend getting your name out there is more important and getting some visibility. However, um, there was one thing that I would like to address in this respect, and this is running free promotions. Yeah. Because, you know, many people believe, well, I do a free promotion and I get, you know, a thousand downloads and then 1000 people actually read my book. And unfortunately, based on my experience, this is not the case. Yeah? And it was, it was better probably a couple of years ago, but nowadays um, it's less true. So sales are actually also a sign of quality, yeah? a sign that you know, someone said, well, you know, I'm really investing. I want to you know, I pay for this book. And the likelihood raises that someone actually reads the book as well. Um, so sales are, are important as well. However, if I would have to decide, you know, I would certainly say visibility is more important and building a platform and having an audience because you can tap, um, you know, you can use that at a later point and it's, you know, just a good long-term strategy. Good stuff. Joyce Isaacson, boy, she's really loving her Q&A here with you today. So thank you so much, Joyce, for the uh, contributions here. She wants to know, what about newsletter swaps? What are your thoughts about that? Newsletter swaps are certainly a, a useful tactic in case the, the audiences are big enough, I'd say. Uh, so in case you, know, you have a list of you know, 1,000 plus readers, then this certainly works out very well. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, clients of mine used this tactic successfully in the past. Um, could you do me a favor? Because there might be some newbies that are tuning in for the first time. Can you explain what are newsletter swaps and how that works? Yes, yeah, so a newsletter swap is basically a tactic for a cross promotion where an author has an email list for instance, you know, of 1,000 subscribers who are interested in, you know, reading fantasy, for instance. And then you would connect with a different author who also writes fantasy. And then you would agree on a newsletter swap or a cross promotion and would, you know, promote the book of the other author and vice versa. 
Nice. Good. I'm glad you explained that because there's going to be probably be newsletter swaps. Um, <laughs> hey, we're right now on the hour. How are you with time? Because we have an additional question and we can probably wrap up right after that. But if you've got to go, we can definitely bolt. No, I'm good. I, st I still have a couple of minutes left, of course. Sweet. Excellent. All right. So we got one more question here before we start to wrap things up. UJR Kingdom says this, how much money should be invested for successive titles before an ROI is achieved? I'm currently spending around 6K for my debut novel, but I'm not sure if I'll make my money back. Oh, that's a tricky question. It is, don't man. We have it's a, don't, don't we have an easier question for finishing? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a tricky question. You know, I, I always like lean approaches where I'd say it does not need to have, you know, an initial budget of 10K. Yeah, it's more like, you know, just invest, you know, 1K or 2K and to see what the... Uh, what the response in the market is. Yeah. So I would need a little bit of more information yeah, um, about what already you know has been done um, with the budget. It's important to to see you know what works and what does not, and then invest into what already worked. Gotcha. All right, uh, we are going to finish on an easy one. Because that one was loaded right there. <laughs> Ladybug says, how can a shy introvert like myself promote myself? I get anxiety just thinking about having to do anything kind of like public speaking. Thanks. Um, good question. You know, I certainly believe that it's not necessary, you know, that everyone nowadays, you know, starts a YouTube channel like you, Dave, for instance, yeah, or, you know, <laughs> Um, you know, does a podcast or is visible on social media, um, it's certainly not a must. And in case that's not in your, in your nature or for whatever reason you don't like to do it, then this is um, totally fine. And actually, we talked before about cross promotions and newsletter swaps. This is certainly something that you can do in case, you know, you are not you know, very popular, I have a big author platform. And also, you know, focusing on having, as I said, you know, very good book, uh, you know, great book description, book title, you know, main keyword, um, you know, in the description, so that you get those fundamentals right. That's very important. Then try running AMS ads, seeing if that works for you. You also do not need to um, you know, be a public figure to uh, do AMS ads and yeah, take it from there. Good advice. I love it. Uh, so Albert Griesmeyer, I really appreciate all the value that you've dropped today. And folks, if you did enjoy it as well, make sure you hit the thumbs up and also Albert, just point down, go over, visit Scribando today. Scribando, I keep saying it wrong, but that's okay. We'll train me eventually to the next interview where I get it right. Scribando.com. Go on over at eight bucks per month. You guys are going to see, you see so much value that he's already delivered today in this interview. So you can only imagine what he's going to be giving you on a near weekly basis. So get on top of that. Albert, any last words before we get ready to finish things up? Well, I'm very happy, Dale, um, that you had me on the show. It was, you know, great talking, um, you know, great giving my advice on so many topics and you know I'm happy to connect soon again. Awesome. Sounds good. We got to get you back on because I, I think that there's a lot of like questions I've got. I think we can probably do an entire episode. But in the meantime, folks, I'm going to need you to go over and take a look at this other video where I talk a little bit more about marketing and book promotion. It's an entire video series. You're going to definitely want to look at that. And if you've already seen that one before, YouTube recommends you should go take a look at this one. If you're watching this on the live replay, you're going, what the heck is that? Well, you'll see once you watch it on the replay. Folks,